Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to East Central Missouri and the world, and welcome to the James Strong Show podcast, podcast number 355. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for making us a part of your day. I appreciate it. This podcast was recorded on the morning of Saturday, March the 23rd, from the James Strong Studio in Western St. Charles County. That's right. A, a, an early Saturday morning podcast. I haven't done one of these in a, in a long time, but uh, I wanted to do this because there's... I guess I would say maybe breaking news. It's constantly changing. And if I waited till Sunday morning to do the podcast, the news would have changed and or been glossed over or, 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 or. Um, and it has to do with Major League Baseball and gambling and sports and gambling in general. Now, I'm a huge baseball fan. I love this time of year. I know a lot of, I, I still say baseball is the American pastime. I know a lot of people say that's not true anymore. It's really football. Baseball is more of a regional game where you root for the home team, not so much. For instance, somebody in St. Louis is going to watch a Cardinals game. Somebody in Chicago is going to watch a Cubs game. Somebody in New York is going to watch a Yankees game. But somebody in New York is not going to watch the Minnesota Twins versus the California Angels. However, somebody in New York will watch the Denver Broncos play the I don't know, Seattle Seahawks, okay? So maybe that's true and maybe it's not. But this time of year with with the Major League Baseball and Major League schedule starting well, next week, okay? Next week, baseball starts. And there's a big cloud over Major League Baseball, a big, big cloud that they're not talking about yet, but they will be talking about it because it's the, it's the elephant in the room, it's the albatross around the neck of the sport it's it's actually the albatross that has been around the neck of of the sport of all sports for quite some time and it's growing 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 and it has to do with sports betting and sports um way back over 100 years ago the black Sox scan with shoeless joe jackson took some money through a game and baseball basically was nobody nobody wanted anything to do with baseball because it was fixed until Babe Ruth came around and revitalized the interest in baseball because he started hitting home runs and nobody had done that before. And it was a great, he was a great player. And he, the, the celebrity of Babe Ruth sparked interest back into the life of major league baseball. In some respects, Shohei Otani has done this with major league baseball in the year 2024. Who is Shohei Otani? And, you know, if you're a halfway baseball fan, you know. If you're not a baseball fan, maybe you don't know. He's a Japanese-born player. Uh, he's played in the major leagues for quite some time already. Uh, he's 29 years old. He's been here, what, I think six years. And he been, has been playing for the California Angels of Anaheim or whatever they call them this week. A team that's really not very good and not really in the spotlight. Well, the Dodgers signed him this year. He's a pitcher and a catcher. He does it. I'm sorry. He's a pitcher and a hitter. He's a, he's one of the best hitters in baseball and when healthy, which to be honest, isn't very often. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball, but he signed a $700 million contract with the Los Angeles Dodgers, almost a billion dollars. Okay. And he's in the news and he's in the news because it really looks like <laughs> he, he, he's a big time baseball gambler. Okay, now sports gambling has been around for a long time. It's been around forever. Uh, many of you, li dear listeners, listening to this podcast, are, for instance, the NCAA brackets. People do the office brackets. You know, you put in a buck, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever, and 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 uh, everybody picks a square, and then you you know, or, or picks a square, or you pick a, a team, and you get your brackets and. And everybody's happy, and yeah, it's fun. But this is a, that's casual office betting where there's no bookie, okay? There's nobody taking a skim off the top. That's not the way things are in sports today. And before we get into baseball, let me touch on the NCAA tournament, okay? Now, every year we have the Cinderella team. Every year we have the upsets. This year we've had more upsets than you can shake a stick at. Uh, Oakland, who, which is a commuter college, almost a glorified community college. Okay. 
had never won a game in the NCAA tournament, but made it because they won their division. They beat Kentucky. <laughs> How does that happen? Okay. Um, James Madison beat Wisconsin. Grand Canyon. I didn't even know if there was a, a, a college called Grand Canyon. They beat St. Mary's, who was, who was a fifth-ranked team. Uh, and it goes on and on and on. These these Yale just beat somebody today. I mean, uh, Auburn, I believe. Uh, so these nothing teams who, quite frankly, have no business being in the tournament. They only are there because uh, they've got a third-string division, and they won their division, then the division champion gets an automatic bid to the tournament. But they're beating all these big-time teams. And you got to think to yourself, was there money involved? You have to think that. And the whole Shohei Otani thing especially is a big mess. In fact, uh, Jason Gay, who's a uh, columnist in the Wall Street Journal, had a very interesting article talking about this. Now, Jason Gay is, is in my opinion, arguably maybe the best baseball writer out there today. I really enjoy his uh, his articles. He's He's not biased. He puts a good spin on things when when he sees things not right. And he had a very interesting article in the Wall Street Journal about Shohei Otani. And this whole thing is being glossed over. And sure, everybody's innocent until proven guilty. I'm a big believer in that. But I'm also a big believer in where there's smoke, there's fire. Now, the Dodgers are are Dodgers and the Yankees are the, are the two big franchises. Okay, they got the most money. They they win the most championships. Well, they have the most money anyway. The Dodgers haven't won that much here lately, even by spending tons of money. But the Dodgers signed the best pitcher in baseball several years ago in Trevor Bauer for, I don't know, $250, $300 million, something like that. Uh, and Trevor Bauer had a interesting curricular activity and uh and basically it was and i don't think i'm going out on a limb for this because it, 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 he even admitted to it he liked to uh tie girls up torture them and have sex with them now the thing the, the women accused him of sexual abuse and bauer did not deny he did all this stuff but he said it was consensual and he likes rough sex okay uh Trevor Bauer doesn't play Major League Baseball anymore. They banned him because he was accused of doing this. He was never accused by, and these were just civil suits. He was never charged uh, criminally. There's never been a trial. There's never been charges filed against him. But just because, you know what, here's how this guy treats women. We don't want him in Major League Baseball. And the Dodgers had to write a big check and not use this guy. Enter Shohei Otani, because this is a big mess for him, and and we still don't really know exactly what happened. But I'll kind of tell you what's happened so far, and the stories come out, the stories change, and the stories just don't make sense. Um, so some people are saying that uh, that, that Otani was a victim of massive theft. Okay, some people say a friend suckered him. Some people say the friend's taken the fall for Otani. Now, what's going on? Who knows? But here's what we do know. Major League Baseball had hoped to kick off its 2024 season with a wave of adoration for its best player, Shohei Otani. He's now ensconced in one of the planet's starriest franchise, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, as we speak, and... As of a couple days ago, the Dodgers flew thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean for an opening day rendezvous in Seoul, Korea. That was against the San Diego Padres, their Southern California rivals. And they did this to showcase the international phenomenon, Shohei Otani, their 29-year-old two-way star. By two-way, I mean he pitches and he hits phenomenally even though he's not pitching this year because he's having his second Tommy John surgery. He may never pitch again, but that's another story for another day. In 2024, the Dodgers season had already been pre-christened as the Summer of Otani. Now, after a subdued run in uh, Orange County with the underperforming Angels, Otani's greatness, again, remember, he's a hitter and a pitcher, and really nobody had done this at that level since Babe Ruth. They had hoped that, they'd, that he would platform a major brand in a major market. 
Now, you could argue that, well, the Angels play in Los Angeles too, but it's not the same thing. Nobody cares about the Angels. Everybody cares about the Dodgers. They're a storied franchise, okay? Now, even though Otani is recuperating from elbow surgery and won't pitch until next year, his free agent switch to the Dodgers received mostly ecstatic reviews, especially when it was revealed that he was asked to defer hundreds of millions in payments in order to give his team financial flexibility to sign talent. Now, he signed a $700 million contract, but he's only getting paid, I think, like $2 million a year. The rest of that's going to be deferred. Why would he do that? Well... It was storied that he did that because he didn't want to pay California taxes. So after he retires, he'll take the rest of the money, live someplace else, and not have to pay the 10% California um, uh, state tax. So in a way, it was kind of smart because he's going to save about $50 million, okay, and put it in his pocket. But there may be another reason why he deferred all this. The deferral was at first offered as evidence of Otani's first team or team first character, I guess I should say. You know, he's, he's a team player. Let's just say that. Um, he was a player who approached the game and started him differently. And, for instance, he's not in the spotlight. He's not a chest beater. Now, it could be because he doesn't speak English. That's a big reason. But, for instance, he got married uh, last year uh, to a lady, a former basketball player. Her name is Mamiko Tanaka. And it really didn't make the headlines because he is a personal guy. He's a quiet guy. That's the way he does it. He's Shoei Otani. He does things his own way. Now, here's the controversy, okay? The unfolding controversy, it's, it's stunning, and really it's over the top. Here's what happened. Here's what we know happened. A $4.5 million wire transfer from a bank account belonging to Otani was paid to a California bookmaker. Now, that's according to both ESPN and and the LA Times, two sources, two reliable sources. Now, the information surfaced in an ongoing investigation when a bookmaker named Matthew Boyer, whose lawyer told uh, the Wall Street Journal's Lindsay Adler, that Boyer never had any contact in any way with Mr. Otani. He never met him, never spoke to him, never texted him. Of course he would say that because it's illegal. With the assistance of an Otani spokesman, the ball player's longtime interpreter, uh, Ipe Mizuhara, gave an interview to USP- ESPN where he declared the gambling debt was entirely his and Otani had just agreed to pay it off for him. Mizuhara said, I want everybody to know that Shohei had zero involvement in betting, Mizuhara told ESPN. I want people to know I did not know this was illegal. I learned my lesson the hard way. I will never do sports betting again. Now, Oshani's interpreter, Mr. Mizuhara, has been in constant contact with Otani. In fact, he was, he's been Otani's right-hand man and interpreter before he even came to the United States, back when he was playing ball in Japan, okay? So... That's that's it. Okay, yeah, well, you know, it was it was the interpreter. It wasn't Otani. Otani knew nothing about it. And by the way, the interpreter who's been involved in, in baseball for over seven years didn't know it was illegal to sports bet. So we're done, right? No, we're not even close to being done. In fact, Otani's legal team then came forward to say that the athlete had been stolen from. So Otani didn't pay this for Mizuhara, according to Otani's legal team. It says Mizuhara just stole his money. Then Mizuharo changed his account, his story, told, telling ESPN that Otani, yeah, you know what, he had been unaware of the debt, uh, and he didn't know his bank account had been accessed. <laughs> so he changed the story. First, Otani paid off the debt for me. He's my buddy. That's what friends do. Then he said, nah, you know what, Otani didn't know anything about this. Okay, well, how did Mizuhara get a hold of a $4.5 million in Otani's bank account? Okay, so this doesn't make sense. Now, explanations that only prompt more questions is that's how a scandal builds, okay, when people start changing their story. Now, there's obviously more to come. We don't know what that is yet. But what about the frequency and nature of the alleged bets? Now, Mizuhara told ESPN he'd never bet on baseball. He would never do it. That's a rule he clearly knew, and he he hadn't. it hasn't stopped all kinds of social media jokes about Shoeless Joe Jackson, Pete Rose, et cetera. 
So now he's saying he wouldn't, first he said he would never do it. Then he said he did it and didn't know it was wrong. Then he said, Otani paid the debt off for him. Then he said, Otani never knew about it. So the story changes by the hour. Okay. Now we'd all like a clear explanation as to how a person in professional sports world allegedly didn't know that using a bookmaker would be illegal, especially in the state of California, because in the state of California, sports gambling is illegal. In many states, it's not, but in California, it is. It's not Las Vegas. It's not Illinois. It's not New Jersey. You cannot bet on sports in California. It's against the law, and this guy didn't know it. He's lived in California, and and his his man has played for the Angels for six years. As for baseball, it's not hard to see the hazard that it and other professional sports invite when they continue to embrace the world of legal sports betting. It's not the sort of betting that's that's really alleged here, but sports world is is the, its eagerness to do business with the gambling industry has created at least the perception that the league is okay with the habits, and it has to be. I mean, who broadcasts the Cardinal baseball games? Bally Sports. They're a gambling. Uh, entity okay they have casinos and they broadcast baseball games espn2 and and regular espn quite often i'll be at the gym watching it and they've got sports betting shows what's the over and under on this team they're not talking about uh well they got a new running back here and uh and this guy you know he had a a sore knee but the knee's feeling better so we think we're going to do well no it's the over and under not even who's going to win are they going to cover the spread Folks, that's not sports. That's gambling. Uh, Excuse me, gaming. Have you noticed that? They don't call it gambling. They call it gaming. Now, I always thought gaming was when you take a controller in your hand, you play Donkey Kong. I thought that was gaming because that's innocent. That's innocent fun. They now call gambling gaming. It's not gaming, it's gambling, okay? Now, almost every big sport, and sporting event is awash in sports betting, advertising, and official gaming partnerships. Logos are common on fields and courts. You watch the games, and and there they are, okay? Commercials during the game. The current March Madness college basketball tournaments, they're ripe targets. And think about it. So many of these kids, sure, the name, image, and likeness, the, the big players get some money now, but nobody from Oakland College or uh, Grand Canyon University or any of those teams, none of those teams, none of those players get paid or do they? <laughs> now, gam- there's gambling shows on ESPN. I talked about that. Now, gambling is a legal business in many places, of course, and state governments, of course, have been eager to sign on. Well, the Mega Millions and Powerball, what they're, they're Jack Patrick getting close to a billion dollars. Once upon a time, government said, ah, gambling's illegal. We'll lock you up if you gamble. We don't like those bookmakers. Wait a minute. What if we become bookmakers ourselves and run a state lottery so we can put the money in our pocket? Now it's different. So gambling is against the law unless the state does it. So And people love gambling. I don't. I've never understood gambling. Gambling to me, I mean, I get nervous flipping for sodas. I mean, I've never been a fan of gambling. I don't have anything against it, but I've never been a fan. I've never understood the aura and draw of gambling, but it is legal. Okay. And like it or not, it's legal. And again, they don't even call it gambling anymore. They call it gaming. Like it, like it softens. It makes it, makes it not so ugly. Okay. Reality is harsher, of course, because in gambling or gaming or whatever, the house almost always wins, which is how they build the big cathedrals in the Las Vegas, in the Nevada desert in Las Vegas. And why they run the, uh, those disclaimers that, uh, Hey, you know, if you have a problem with gambling, call us 800 number and we'll get you help. Okay. So in other words, they've, they, they've done that to clear their conscience or at least to get the lawyers off their back. Cause I don't know that they truly have a conscience, but trouble isn't hard to find. The athletes have been repeatedly nabbed for infractions involving legal battle, uh, in, in sports betting for a long time. And it's just not in the pro ranks. College, too. Players routinely talk about the harassment they receive from aggravated betters. Okay? It's not just that, okay, uh, your favorite college team, they're down by two, and they get the ball to the big man. Three, two, one. He takes the shot, and he misses it. You're sorry that your team won. 
these players are being threatened because, do you know I lost $400 because you missed that shot? <laughs> and here's the other thing. Let's say he had made it. Somebody else would come up to him and say, do you know we, I lost $400 because you made that shot? So they can't win. So think of the college players. They don't get paid, and they get bullied when they do the right thing or do the wrong thing, when they win or they lose. You know, well, we won the game. Yeah, but you didn't cover. What is that? Players routinely talk about the harassment they receive from aggravated betters. Now, we haven't gotten to the destructiveness with ordinary consumers, or have we? Uh, again, the Wall Street Journal, they recently published an account of a psychiatrist who turned to legal gambling apps and wound up $400,000 in debt. This is a psychiatrist, a guy with a doctor's degree. This isn't some guy who's the garbage man and he, and he, and he pissed away the, uh, the, the kid's uh, college fund on gambling. This is a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a guy with a doctor's degree, a doctor, okay? Now, that's not Otani's problem, the fact that many in this country have a gambling problem. That's not his problem. But what is his problem is there's laws and rules. And unless I'm missing something, there's lots of smoke, which means there's fire someplace, okay? The heat's going to be on somebody. Now, there's some irony in this controversy showing Otani how different it is to be a Dodger, okay? How every story is bigger and noisier and messier and on the front page. Um, in fact, you've got to ask yourself, well, when he was with the Angels and not on the front page, was this still going on? Don't know. We don't know, okay? Um, that's the story as of Thursday. Now, yesterday, another story broke. And it had to do with Major League Baseball. They finally said, you know what? We're going to open an investigation into the Shoei Otani and uh, Mr. Mizuhara's uh, association with that illegal bookmaker, Matthew Boyer. So it, it's, it's Major League Baseball has opened an investigation. Now, I have to wonder if the Department of Justice is going to open an investigation because sports betting in California is illegal. And they've raised their hand and said, you know what? I was involved in sports betting. $4.5 million worth of sports betting, okay? Now, Major League Baseball said it's gathering information on the situation. That's when the news broke yesterday, or was it Thursday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Wednesday? Whenever it broke, okay, whenever I first read it. Uh, but that Matthew Boyer, um, he definitely took the bets in Otani's name. Now, did Mizuhara... Forge Otani's name? Don't know. First he said he did, then he said he didn't. Or was it the other way around? I forget. But in an interview with ESPN, Mizuhara again said that Otani had personally made payments to Boyer to pay off the gambling debt. That's what he told ESPN. Then the next day, he said, nah, that's not what happened because Otani had nothing. He didn't know anything about it. Now, which is true? Did Otani really make the, the payments for him? Or did Otani know absolutely nothing about it? And if Otani knew nothing about it, how did Mizuhara have access to his bank account to write a check for $4.5 million? And by the way, from the get-go, they never said that Mizuhara paid the money. They said the money came from Otani's account. Now, who wrote the check? Hard to say. But again, it's California, and sports betting is illegal in California. So somebody broke the law. Somebody should go to jail. But then in a society where, in fact, especially in California, where shoplifting isn't even prosecuted, but, you know, I mean, in St. Louis, do you know, did you know that in St. Louis, if, if, if you're, if you're in the city of St. Louis and your car gets broken into and you call the police, they're going to, they're not even going to fill out a report. Yeah, we don't do that anymore. So why not just bet on sports? I know it's illegal, but nobody else follows the law, follows the rules. So why should they? Now the Dyers, the Dyers have fired Mizuhara and, Ot and Otani's, uh, attorneys released a statement that said their client had been a victim of massive threat. <laughs> massive theft. What did I say? Threat? Theft. Now, what is it? First, the story was, yep, Mizuhara raised his hand and said, yep, this is mine, and Otani was a nice guy and paid off my debt. Then they said, you know what? I kind of did it on my own, and, and, and Otani didn't know anything about it. Now it's 
Mizuhara stole from Otani. They're trying to segregate Otani further and further from this. Now, why would the Dodgers do this? (laughs) Think about it. They've got to pay this guy $700 million, almost a billion dollars. And if it comes to fruition that Shohei Otani bet on Major League Baseball, he's done. Oh, and by the way, unless there's a clause in that contract, the Dodgers still have to write that check. I'm not sure they've written all the Trevor Bauer check yet, which was about two to $300 million. So the Dodgers could, in theory, be on the hook to pay Major League Baseball players a billion dollars who don't pitch for them, who don't play for them. Now, it's one thing if they threw their arm out and can't play. These guys are perfectly healthy. But one was a uh, social pariah, and the other was is betting on baseball. Now, they also said that they would turn matters over to the authorities. This is uh, Otani's attorneys. They said they turned the matters over to the authorities, but they haven't said exactly which law enforcement agency they've been dealing with or in what capacity. Because remember, this is against the law, just not against Major League Baseball rules. This is illegal. <clears throat> Major League Baseball statement on the investigation into Otani and Mizuhara did not announce any punitive measures such as paid or unpaid leave for Otani and said only that its Department of Investigations had began their formal process investigating the matter. Now, the Dodgers have another player. Uh, I don't remember his name. He was a pitcher who allegedly beat his girlfriend. And again, he's never been charged. He was just accused of this. Well, he's done. Okay. The Dodgers have had a history of if somebody does something that's not right, they purge them from the team. But they haven't done it with Otani. They're still looking into the matter. Okay. (laughs) That's funny because Major League Baseball's statement on the investigation and Otani, they didn't announce any punitive measures. So they're not going to go ahead and put them on leave yet. Now, the league's investigation into Otani and Mizuhara comes just three months after the two-way phenomenon from Japan signed a, here it is, 12-year, $700 million contract, the largest contract ever to a professional athlete, not just a Dodger, not a ball player, an athlete. Nobody in sports has ever signed a contract that big. Now, Mizuhara, like I said earlier, he worked with Otani both in Japan and his six seasons with the Los Angeles Angels. And they also hired, uh, the Dodgers hired Mizuhara as well because, you know, with Otani comes Mizuhara because Otani doesn't speak English. Now, the Dodgers were in Korea when this news of Mizuhara's firing broke and the payments made to Bauer, Boyer, from Otani's bank account came to fruition. Otani hasn't said anything about this, which is smart because he's got lawyers. And he was let out of the Dodgers clubhouse by a media relations staffer after their final game. In other words... Nothing to see here, folks. We're going to whisk this guy out. Now, what about the other 25 players on the team? I don't think they did that with him, with them, but they took Otani out so he couldn't talk to anybody. Well, he doesn't have an interpreter, but then I'm sure there were Japanese-speaking press, and they didn't want him to say anything. They didn't want any pictures. They did not want any exposure. Now, the team did fly back to Los Angeles and will begin a three-game exhibition series uh, against the Angels Sunday, tomorrow. And they start next week. Uh, in fact, they play the Cardinals uh, on, on the opening series. The Dodgers haven't commented on Major League Baseball's investigation into Otani and Mizuhara. Friends, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal. Um, because I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Sports betting will ruin sports as we know it. Now, we're always going to have sports because... You know, from the Romans to Marie Antoinette, all leaders, you know, they've always give them bread and circus and the people will leave you alone. That's kind of the way folks are. And folks do what they want to do. They go to work every day and they want to go ahead and have their entertainment. And quite often that entertainment involves gambling. Once upon a time, you'd go to your bookmaker or you play poker with your buddies, or you play the office uh, NCAA tournament pool, which to me is just all innocent gambling. Why do I say it's innocent? Well, because there's winners and losers in gambling all the time. 
but at least with the office pools or the buddies playing poker, if a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars is laid on the table, somebody gets some of that. The house doesn't get anything. When you have the house involved, the house always wins. I mean, they don't win every bet, but when the smoke clears, they always come out ahead. That's why casinos want you to stay there longer. The longer you stay, the better the odds are that you're going to go ahead and and, and lose, that the house is going to get their money back. Just keep going double or nothing until the house wins, okay? Um, Are there winners in gambling? Sure. Are there losers in gambling? Of course. Um, If you know anybody who is a big gambler, who enjoys it a lot, they'll be offered... Uh, weekends in Las Vegas or weekends at the Riverboat Casino or weekend something or we'll give you, we'll comp you free meals. Why do they do that? It's not because they like them. It's because they want them to come back and stay even longer because statistics show that the longer you stay, the more money you lose. So they'll give you a $200 room because they know you're going to lose 500 bucks at the crap table. All right. That's how it works. And I've got a theory and it's, it's just a theory. And I've shared this with a couple of people. And I've gotten the reaction from, you don't know what you're talking about, to, I hope you don't know what you're talking about. But let's go back to Shohei Otani and this contract he signed. $700 million, okay, over 12 years. But it only gets like $2 million a year until the end of the contract. Now, a lot of people have said, you know what? This is a good contract for the Dodgers, but it's a good contract for Otani as well because after 12 years, <coughs> he'll move to Japan and there's not as much of a tax burden there and he'll wind up about $50 million richer. Now, there's two ways to look at this. Why $50 million compared to $700 million isn't much. Friends, it's $50 million dollars. That's a lot of money. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. $50 million is a lot of dough. I mean, could you imagine the cars you could buy with that? The houses, the vacations, the boats, go on and on and on. It's a lot of money, okay? But then you think to yourself, well, he's getting $2 million a year, okay? So he can can eat on that. But is Shohei Otani also involved in gambling big time? Was it just brushed under the carpet when he played for the Los Angeles Angels because there's really no press down there? And then all of a sudden, it was made a big deal when he came to Los Angeles Dodgers, who, who yeah, the press is all always on you. Is this a really big deal or has this been a really big deal for a long time? I think that it may have been. And as I said before, if Shohei Otani is found that he's bet on baseball, they have to ban him. He has to be done. He can't play anymore, okay? Because if cause remember what Pete Rose did. Pete Rose has been banned forever. Pete Rose has more base hits than anybody in the history of the game. And he's banned from baseball because he bet on baseball. And by the way, Major League Baseball and Pete Rose both said, yeah, he bet on baseball. In fact, he bet for his own team. He bet that he was going to win. Now, if he had bet he was going to lose, that's a big deal. If you're going to bet, if you're betting on yourself and you and your team to win, that's not as big a deal. But they've banned him forever, okay? Willie Mays, the great Willie Mays once upon a time, he was banned from baseball for a while because after he retired, he wanted to make some extra dough and they made him the the, the doorman of some casino. He was like, like their official greeter, okay? The doorman, that's not, that's that's what they called him or that's what some people did, but it was truly, he was like the face of the casino. He he would greet the whales. The whales would come in for the weekend and they, here's Willie Mays. You can shake his hand. You can have your photos with him. You can shoot the breeze with him. You can talk about baseball and that, okay? And that's all he had to do, shake people's hands and talk about baseball. And they paid him a bunch of money. But the check came from the casino. And they banned the great Willie Mays from baseball just for that. Had nothing to do with gambling at all. It's just that his paycheck came from an organization that was involved in gambling. 
And Willie Mays was banned from baseball for a while. Now, after he quit the casino, a temporary time went. He was he's back in the good graces of baseball. But he got a sentence from MLB just for working for a casino that had nothing to do with gambling, okay? Let's revisit what has happened here. The fact is that this bookie, Mr. Boyer, was paid $4.5 million from Shohei Otani's bank account. That's the fact. Now, it was either Otani that did it, Mizuhara, his uh, interpreter, did it with Otani's knowledge, or Mizuhara did it without Otani's knowledge, okay? That's what we know now. Fact, $4.5 million in gambling came from Shohei Otani's bank account. Now, how it got there, that's what's still open for discussion. But the fact that in three days, or two or three days, however long it's been, the story has already changed twice. There's three different renditions of the story out there. They keep floating a story, and when people lose their mind, they say, oh, no, 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 I'm mistaken, it was this. Eh, I'm mistaken, it was that. Again, where there's smoke, there's fire. If you continue to change the story, there's something there. And this will ruin Major League Baseball as we know it. This will ruin sports as we know it. Now, will there be, still be Major League Baseball? Sure. I mean, again, we need our bread and circus. We enjoy that kind of stuff. But if baseball turns into the WWE, which is a sporting event too, um, it's a choreographed, it's choreographed entertainment, kind of like baseball or football or basketball or hockey. But <laughs> the WWE is fixed, okay? Everybody knows it's fixed, okay? Is Major League Baseball fixed? I don't know. If there's gambling involved, it must be. And there certainly is gambling and Major League Baseball, gambling and sports. The fact is that gambling is ensconced in sports. The opinion is it's affecting the income, the outcome, I should say. The income is affecting the outcome. Just like the fact is that $4.5 million was taken out of Shohei Otani's bank account and paid to a bookie. What we don't know is who took it out. And $4.5 million from a guy who's making $2 million a year? Think about it. <laughs> Where else is that money coming from? Oh, dear listeners, this story is not going to go away. In fact, it may have already changed by the time you listen to the podcast. Right now it's uh, 7, 11 a.m. on a Saturday morning, uh, March the 23rd. Uh, so that's the timestamp of, uh, of this podcast. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what transpires because this, dear listeners, is a really big deal. Well, that's it. I'm done. James Strong Show at Hotmail.com. Thank you again for your emails. Thank you again for your suggestions and your comments and your everything. And I appreciate you, those of you who share the podcast with others as well. That's it. We're done. This is James Strong saying adios.